Young Dolph's death shocked the city of Memphis and the entire rap game. But most people have no idea about the deadly war that led to him getting killed in his hometown. So today we're breaking it all down and taking a look at the crazy beef between Paper Route Empire and the Trula Mafia. Back in the day, Young Dolph's Paper Route crew and Trula Mafia was cool with each other and a Trula member named Jay Money was real tight with Dolph. Jay Money was allegedly one of the most active dudes that Trula had in the streets, but at the same time, he was going hard in the booth and it looked like he could be the next rapper out of Memphis to make it big. Dolph and Jay Money linked up in the studio for a few tracks together, and people close to the situation said that Dolph was his biggest inspiration. Most rappers popping off in Memphis had to link up with another artist or major label to get their clout up in the industry, but Dolph made his own lane and did it all by himself. Going independent was a huge win for Dolph and proved he didn't need anybody's help to get put on but his success is also what led to him getting brutally murdered. Before we get to that though, we gotta break down what was going on behind the scenes. According to rumors, Jay Money was getting busy in the streets and really putting pressure on the ops, and he caught a murder charge in 2014 for allegedly killing his own homie. A dude named Denzel Monroe was driving down the street when Jay Money started letting off shots. Monroe hopped out of the whip to let Jay Money know it wasn't some ops rolling up, but Jay allegedly kept shooting till Monroe was dead. Jay Money got hit with first degree murder and five counts of attempted murder but it's not clear how the situation shook out or why he started shooting in the first place. Jay was on his way up in the rap game, but keeping one foot in the trenches led to him getting killed just a couple years later. On August 20th, 2016, Jay Money was outside of a nightclub called Kitten's Cabaret when a dude named Freddie Yarber shot and killed him. The police said it was a gang-related hit, but it's not clear what set Yarber was repping. He pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and being a convicted felon in possession of a handgun. And in 2019, he went down for 15 years over the case. Jay Money's death was a huge blow to the Trula Mafia. He was one of the most feared dudes in the city and was calling all the shots for the crew. Jay was putting on for Trula Mafia in the rap game too and giving them even more clout. After he died, Trula started having all kinds of internal drama and that's when they split into two different sides and started a war that eventually got Dolph killed. Big Scar came up in the streets repping Trula Mafia. After Jay Money's death, everyone started having static with each other, so Scar left and started his own crew, Rich and Ruthless, aka Double R. He brought some of his homies with him like Baby K, Kato Two Times, and Tink, and at first everything was all good between Double R and Trula. But that all changed after someone in Trula murdered a Double R affiliate named BG. All the drama started when BG and a dude from Trula named Simo sparked some kind of beat. At first it was just between the two of them, but when you both repping sets in a wild city like Memphis, it's only a matter of time before the crews get involved. Simo's older brother Zamo Trula is another high-ranking member of the Trula Mafia, and they always roll with dudes like Jay Mula, Zay, and go crazy. BG and Simo were dissing back and forth on social media, and Trula allegedly escalated the situation and slid on him. BG was riding around with a double R affiliate named 2-3 when some homies in another car pulled up and started letting off shots. BG was shot and killed, and 2-3 ended up in critical condition. It was rumored Simo, Zay, and Go Crazy was the ones who took him out, and that was later confirmed when the cops put Go Crazy and hit him with first degree murder, three attempted murders, assault, and use of a firearm commissioned of a dangerous felony. Crazy confessed to the shooting and took the fall for everything, but that was only the beginning. While Go Crazy was dealing with the BG murder situation, C-Mode was in juvie for a different case, and while he was behind bars, Double R allegedly clapped back and took out one of his closest homies. Zay and Simo came up together and allegedly slid on BG, and while Simo was locked up, Zay was shot and killed. It didn't take long for Trula to get revenge though. 2-3 survived getting shot the night he got caught in the whip with BG, but he wasn't so lucky the next time the ops found him. They pulled up to his crib and started letting off shots into the apartment, and 2-3 and his dad both got hit. Unfortunately, this time, he ain't pulled through and was pronounced dead. After Simo came back home, he jumped right back in the trenches and allegedly slid on Double R again. In January 2020, Simo, Jay Mula, and a dude named CEO Bobby all got booked after they got into a shootout in the middle of the day. The cops responded to the shooting and the Trula guys tried to speed off, but after running a few red lights, they crashed their whip and the police caught up to him. Simo already had a bunch of charges against him, but after he bonded out, he hopped in the booth and started putting pressure on Double R in the rap game too. He dropped a track called Send a Hit and got a lot of buzz in the city, but Double R was clapping back in the booth as well. Jay Money's brother D Money was shot and killed on Trick Street in Memphis, and CEO Jizzle from Double R dissed him on the track Rich and Ruthless and rapped, If you diss on 2 3, swear to God it's gonna be RIP. You ain't hear what happened to the last dude got left on Trick Street. Baby K was the first Double R rapper to get some buzz, but he convinced Big Scar to hop in the studio and he blew up instantly. Scar was racking up crazy numbers from the jump, and it ain't take long for Gucci Mane to reach out and sign on to 1017. Scar had connections in the industry because his cousin Pooh Shiesty was already signed to Gucci, and they started putting on for Memphis together like crazy. 
Making it in the rap game don't mean you safe from the streets though. And in 2020, the ops caught Big Scar and almost killed him. He took a gunshot to the hip, but the bullet wound went up his spine and into one of his lungs. Scar barely survived the shooting, but he showed the ops that it wasn't going to slow him down and he hopped right back in the booth. Big Scar was also tight with Young Dolph and said he was a huge inspiration. Dolph was in a tough spot though because of what was going down between Double R and Trula Mafia. Back in the day, he was cool with a lot of dudes on the Trula side, but he also had homies in Double R and even signed a rapper from the crew named Big Ump. Rap fans who don't keep up with Memphis street politics ain't think it was a big deal, but in the city it was huge news. Dolph and Jay Money was super close before Jay's murder. His death caused a lot of drama between everyone in Trula Mafia. But rumors say what really caused the split was when Big Scar hooked up with D-Money's girl. After Double R and Trula went to war, D-Money was allegedly killed by Big Unk. And that's why so many people were shocked that Dolph signed him to his label, Paper Route Empire. Dolph had been pretty neutral during the whole beef, but signing Big Unk turned him into one of Trula's biggest ops immediately. And it's what allegedly got him killed. Dolph came up in the streets and knew how hard it was to make it out of Memphis. What made him different though is how he did everything on his own. He could have signed with Yo Gotti back in the day and made everything easier for himself, but instead he invested his own money into the rap game and started taking over. By 2020, Dolph was already a living legend in Memphis, but at the same time his old homies was in the middle of a deadly war. Jay Mula came home from jail after serving time from the shooting when he got locked up with C-Mode and CEO Bobby. Rumors was flying that a dude from Double R named Keto two times robbed him and took his gun after he got back. But Mula said it was all cap and that he had used the gun to shoot up Double R and then gave it to one of his little homies. At the same time, his homie Simo was still applying pressure on Double R. They allegedly shot him twice, but Simo survived and went right back to sliding on ops. The cops finally booked him after a bunch of shootings, and they even connected him to BG's murder from back in the day. Simo was one of Trula's top shooters, and he allegedly even shot up the same house twice in the same week. He slid into Double R territory and started letting off shots at some dudes inside the crib but missed everyone. So a few days later, Simo came right back and shot at two people who were standing outside at the same spot. Simo getting locked up was a massive blow for Trula Mafia, but another dude in the set named CEO TZ held it down for the group. And this is how it all allegedly led to young Dolph's tragic death. TZ wasn't just Dolph's op because of the issues with Trula Mafia. He also had ties to Yo Gotti and was spotted kicking it with Gotti's brother. Gotti and Dolph had major issues ever since Dolph decided to go independent instead of signing with him back in the day. When Dolph turned him down, Gotti signed Black Youngster instead and allegedly tried to take Dolph out twice. The first time happened after Dolph dropped a wild diss track called Play With Your Bitch and rapped, Don't play with me, ho Gotti, you a hoe, man. You went from my biggest fan to my biggest hater, begging me to sign with you, but I had too much paper. Still that same nigga that used to front your big brother. Found out he a bitch too, now I call him your big sister. And they said them pussy niggas on your team are in your draws. They say you make them pussy ass niggas call you boss but they can't call you king because that's Dolph. One day after Dolph dropped a video for the track, someone slid on him in North Carolina and let off over 100 shots into his SUV. Black youngster was charged for the shooting, but the cops ended up dropping the case against him because they ain't have enough evidence. Then a few months later, Dolph allegedly hunted Gotti down in LA to confront him over everything. It's not clear exactly how the situation popped off, but Dolph ended up getting shot three times. Dolph pulled through and made a full recovery, and after that, the beef with Gotti died down. But after Dolph was shot and killed in 2021, everyone immediately thought Gotti and CMG were involved with the situation. Dolph's issue with Gotti wasn't the only drama he was dealing with in Memphis though, and the war between Double R and Trula Mafia is allegedly what really got him killed. Dolph was at his favorite bakery buying cookies when two shooters hopped out of a stolen Benz and started letting off shots. The first dude the cops suspected for Dolph's death was a rapper named Straight Drop. They grabbed another dude named Cornelia Smith at first, then Straight Drop got caught trying to run in Indiana the same day. A few months later, they arrested a dude named Hernandez Govan and claimed he's the one who ordered the hit, but it turns out there might be more to the story. Joshua Taylor, aka CEO TZ from Trula Mafia, was named as a person of interest in the case. He never got booked for Dolph's murder, but rumors say he helped plan the whole thing. A dude named Jamarcus Johnson was also arrested for helping the shooters escape after Dolph's death, and he ended up pleading guilty and agreed to testify against everyone else in the case so his murder charge would get dropped. There's a good chance that Johnson would have gotten TZ jammed up in the case too when he took the stand, but the ops caught up to TZ before the police had the chance. Back in June, TZ was found dead in his whip from gunshot wounds. Nobody's been booked for his murder, but there are a couple rumors going around about what happened. One version says that Dolph's homies from Paper Route Empire or Double R killed TZ for revenge. TZ was already Double R's op, so they had a reason to take him out. But if they knew he was involved with Dolph's murder, it would definitely put a bigger target on his back. There's also a wild rumor that says TZ got backdoored by his own people. There's no evidence to back any of this up yet, but here's a theory flying around right now. 
Yo Gotti won a Dolph out of the picture and allegedly put a bag on his head. TZ and other Trula affiliates were already cool with Gotti, so they went to collect the money and getting tighter with his crew. The hit went down like it was supposed to, but the shooters were sloppy and ended up getting caught. Even though TZ was never charged, a lot of people think he was involved somehow. And if he got wrapped up in the case, he could have told the police everything he knew and skated on his own charges. That's why some people think Gotti wanted TZ gone too. If Gotti really was involved and was in contact with TZ about the hit, it could have got him sent away for life if TZ decided to flip. This is all just a rumor though, and right now there's no evidence even linking Gotti to Dolph's death. People want to tie Gotti into the situation because he's a big name and it would make the whole story even crazier. But in reality, it probably all happened because of the Trula Mafia and Double R War. Dolph wanted to help other dudes from the streets of Memphis make it out and change their lives. But when you sign an artist who are in the middle of a gang war, you just gonna end up putting a target on your own back. The trial for Dolph's murder probably won't start till next year. But when Jamarcus Johnson testifies against his homies, we'll find out way more about what's going on behind the scenes. Hopefully the police are protecting him though, cause otherwise he might end up like CEO TZ. Double R and Trula Mafia turned Memphis into a war zone and lost a ton of people on both sides. Big Scar survived it all and looked like he was really gonna blow up in the industry. But then last year, he was tragically pronounced dead after an accidental overdose. The beef pulled off cause so many dudes ended up either dead or in prison though. And hopefully it stays that way cause Memphis has already lost way too many people to the streets. Rest in peace to everyone who lost their lives.